Hey everyone, how you doing? It's Vicious here. Today I'm going to be giving you some gameplay footage for the brand new game Dungeon Defenders, officially now released on Steam October 19th. Really cool, interesting concept. It's a twist on the tower defense genre. It combines action RPG elements like Diablo, where you have live combat and uh, kind of grind for loot to get a stronger character, and the tower defense, where you have to place and use strategy with towers to uh, defend yourself and, and uh, you know, beat the game. So today's video's goal, basically I want to introduce the game to you, kind of show off some of the gameplay mechanics, uh, so you understand what the game is all about, and just to, so you can get a little teaser to see if you are interested in buying the game. It's made by Indie Studio, uh, Trendy Entertainment, so it's a pretty cheap purchase. Indie developers are usually fairly priced games. We're going to start a brand new character, so I'm going to show you the hero creation content. Donning his robe and wizard hat. The apprentice is eager to delve deeper into the world of the arcade. You have four main the heroes. The, Grand Major. the apprentice, the squire, the huntress, and the monk. Real quick, let me do one thing. One thing real quick. Just gonna go... Turn this down. There we go. Now you can probably hear me better. Let's check out the options real quick too anyways. You got... Split screen, this game does have local split screen support, so you and up to three other people can actually play on split screen on the computer. And that can be used directly in conjunction with the online multiplayer. So you and your best friend, or your sister, or your brother, whoever can play online with other people while using your own computer in split screen mode. So that's a really cool concept. It does have native support for the Xbox 360 controller. It does have voice and push to talk is on there, so you don't have to have an open mic. Video options, you just basically have resolution, full screen, and post processing. You can set your own custom resolution from uh, the configuration launcher before you launch the game. Okay. So, as I was saying before, you got four main heroes. <clears throat> the Apprentice is like the sorcerer, he kind of reminds me of a black mage from Final Fantasy. Does it have a melee attack, has a ranged attack, so he's kind of the weaker of the characters probably as far as receiving damage but he keeps safe by staying out of range. The squire is your up close and personal fighter. He's gonna have a strong defense and a strong attack. Huntress is kind of like um, I haven't actually used her yet but think like Rogue from World of Warcraft you know it's gonna be sneaky use stealth and and tactics to the advantage and the monk is more of the support role for the game who can debuff enemies and buff allies. I have about three hours under my belt right now with the Apprentice, and I really do like the Apprentice character, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick with him. Now, designing your hero, basically, it's kinda like Borderlands. You're gonna have three main colors that are associated with your, your character costume, and you can adjust these with the RGB sliders. So you can make uh, the red, green, and blue channels, whatever you want with these sliders, and it's going to affect how your character looks. I'm not going to spend too much time here, so that way we can actually get some some game going. Uh, that looks good for now. Whatever, I'll come back and change it later. Give him a name. Let's see here, we're going to go with Magus. Or Magus, depending on how you want to say that. And then after that, you actually get to customize your crystal. The crystal is like your core in this game. This is what you're defending. This is the whole purpose of the game is to keep this thing from being destroyed. And the same thing, just like the character customization. You have three main colors here. You have the aura, which is what's shining on the floor, the main gym color, and the souls, these little sparklies coming off. You can adjust these RGB values to customize the way it looks. I think it was a really neat idea to do this. It kind of does have, uh, add some extra extra layers of customization to the game to kind of keep it fresh. Oops. Oh yeah. And also you have many, many more versions of that that you can unlock as you complete different challenges and requirements. But right now, since I'm just starting a new game, I only have the basic one. There it goes. Alright, good with that. So I'm going to select my hero. And we're going to go ahead and start a game.
All right, so you have the campaign mode, which is pretty long, it looks like. And then you're going to have a lot of challenges as well. Then you have four difficulties. We're going to go ahead and start off with the campaign here. We'll skip this opening video. It's already on YouTube as part of the media released from Trendy Entertainment. The game runs off of the Unreal Engine, which is a really great engine. It scales well with low hardware and works really great on high-end computers. It gives you great graphics. So right away you're going to start with level 1 and you get to assign a single skill point to either your hero stats, your uh, tower stats, your resistances, and eventually you get abilities that you can upgrade as well. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my tower damage. This is part of the RPG aspect of the game that you have to choose how you're going to level up your hero. Are you going to make your hero an incredibly strong fighter? Are you going to make your towers incredibly strong? Or are you going to kind of do like a, a mix of the two? So that's one reason the game is very customizable. And then we don't have any equipment yet, but we will soon where you have to, you know, obviously find equipment for your character and get stronger that way as well. So you get this thing here, the forge. Basically, this is where you can swap heroes because there are four main heroes and you're not stuck with the one you create. You can make, I think, up to eight character slots. I'm not sure. Maybe just four. And anytime you would like in the building phase that we're in right now, you can swap to a different hero. And the reason you do this, obviously, is so you have access to different towers because each hero has their own towers. Also, if you see that you have an enemy incoming that is weak to a particular strength of one of your other heroes, then you can switch over to that other hero and you know have the best defense possible. Or if you're specializing your characters, like say you build one character to have very strong towers, you might use some to build your towers, and then switch heroes over to your strong attacker for the defensive phase. So there you go, just some ideas. Item box. Looks like we actually have an item in here already. This is your shared loot stash for all your heroes. This is where when you pick up items, you can send them directly to your item box. Then you can equip it to your hero, you can sell it, or just inspect it and upgrade it and whatnot. Okay, so game is a third person view like this, but using the mouse wheel you can scroll out to a top down view. When you're in the top down view, the mouse controls your direction of look. When you're in the first person though, you're controlling Y axis and X axis. If you're zoomed out, you can hold the control key to rotate the camera. You've got WSAD to move like you do in first person shooters. And the jump button is the space bar. One small qualm that I'm sure will be fixed very shortly. There is no invert Y axis for the mouse option that I have found. But there is an invert axis option for the Xbox controller. So I know they're conscious of the idea that people need to invert the axis, they just forgot to put it on the mouse options. First thing we're going to do is get some mana out of these treasure chests. If you look at the heads-up display, the left side shows red. 130 on top, 130 on the bottom shows that have 130 health out of 130 health. 40 on top, 40 mana out of 40 mana. The mana is what we use to build our defenses. So middle mouse button is what brings up your heads up display for all of your actions. And we're going to summon a defense and magic missile tower. When you're summoning a tower, you have a radius around your character that you can choose to place it. And then once you've placed it, you have one more option to select the orientation. Unlike, say, Sanctum, where you can place the tower all the way across the stage, as long as you have it in your line of sight, you do need to be directly next to where you want to place it in this game. And that's because during the combat phase you will be upgrading, replacing, and fixing towers and stuff. While in Sanctum you didn't have any of that to do. So that's why it would be a little bit cheap if you could place towers across the stage. And then we'll put one more over here. I had a level 13 Squire, I think it was. The game gets a lot more intricate and a lot more fun, I think, as you level up because you start to get the much better gear, gain access to more skills and more towers but just because I wanted to show you this beginning experience I went ahead and, and deleted that character for the greater calls 
And when you've spent all your mana, you're ready to start this combat phase by going to your Eternia Crystal and hitting the E key. So I've got range to my advantage. Just want to stay away from these guys and kind of knock them down with some magic bullets. I can charge up this weapon if I want to. Does more damage that way, and it does a little bit more area of effect damage. Oops. I find a really good balance uh, so far between the damage your towers provide and the defense they provide and your character's damage and defense. I feel like if you like the tower defense genre, you can really depend on your towers heavily. And I feel like if you're an action RPG fan, you can invest into your hero and do a lot of damage with your hero. So it really does let you play the game the way you want to play it. When you complete a wave, you're going to get the treasure chest to respawn. So this is going to be how you get some equipment. Sometimes there's equipment in here, like right there. i got some boots. F key lets you equip it. E key puts it in the item box. So we'll equip it since I have no boots on. Put some more towers down here. Looks like we got. Put that in the item box. And a new weapon. Nice. Now, weapons, when you get a new weapon, it does show up on your character. So you will be showing off whatever awesome weapon you have with your character graphics. Armor, however, is purely statistical. So you don't actually see any difference in your character armor. Maybe higher level stuff later in the game will give you some kind of visual effect on your character. These green blocks are mana that were 10 each. Little blue ones that drop off the enemies, they're worth like one each. Another one. And we'll just put that in the item box. And this item box. Let me show you what else we can do here. Now, if I hold the shift key, I can see the map. This is going to be good for you to figure out where you want to place your defenses. Also, when you're under attack, you can see enemies on the map. And it's also going to show you where they're coming from and how many. So, center door is going to have 11 enemies. Looks like 8 goblins, 3 archers, and then the left and right doors are going to have 3 goblins, 1 archer. So, you do have to really use your brain in this game. It is not going to be just a point and click button mashing to win game. You definitely have to use your brain, learn your characters, learn your strategies, learn your stages. And I think that's one of the reasons I really like this game so far. Because it really does genuinely reward you for being an intelligent player. I actually lost this stage the first time I played. And then after learning what I did wrong when I played it again the second time, I just totally destroyed it. It was just a matter of learning what to do. Alright, we'll go ahead and get this next wave started. I missed! This was the deceiving part of watching trailers before I got the game. This is, when you're watching this combat phase, it doesn't look really interesting in my opinion. You don't really get to know the depth of the game, which is why I really wanted to bring you a video showing the gameplay experience. Looks like I leveled up here. Let's go ahead and do defense damage, defense area. Good. When you level up, you get the ability to have more health and more mana. Things like upgrading I can't even do yet because I don't have the ability to hold 100 mana.
So I haven't gotten a chance to go online and play with other people yet. So I'm curious to know what happens with loot. Like when you're getting loot from treasure chests and from enemy drops, is it exclusive to you as in you're the only one that will see it so you can pick up your loot? Or is it going to be uh, a loot hog problem where somebody can run around grabbing all the treasure chests and leaving you bone dry? That's one thing I'm very curious about. I do hope it has something similar to like the new Diablo 3 game where when you see loot it's for you and you only and the other characters can't see it. Or if it has some kind of like random loot distribution system so that it like you know, gives each character a piece of loot in order. Something along those lines I think would be really nice. Okay, I'm just going to sit on the mana I have left and go ahead and start this up. As this is the first stage, it is not too difficult. again. Let's get some hero damage. There we go. So you can choose to spend all your money on your defenses, or if you go up back to the item forge, you can deposit your mana into your bank, and you can actually use it to buy items later. So that's a creative choice there as well, because you can decide whether you want to risk not spending all your money during the stage and save some of it for purchasing items and upgrades, or you can decide to you know, just go all out and make sure you win. And I think this is the first wave. Yes. I have ogres or something coming from the left and right doors. So I gotta make sure I take care of those guys. Also, I now have the magic blockade. I just unlocked that. So here's what we're going to do. Bolster the defenses here at the bottom. This building phase can be a little bit on the slow side, perhaps. But it's not like it actually feels slow when you're doing it. As you can see, when you get used to it, you're much faster at this. You're much more proficient. So 
So let me talk about some of the other stuff. Not only do you get to upgrade your equipment, or I should say not only do you get to collect equipment, you can upgrade your equipment, so you can invest into your equipment and spend mana on upgrading it. Looks like I think 25 levels each piece of equipment can go up. There's a pet system in this game where you have uh, like a pet tag along with you and you can boost your abilities or attack and do a whole bunch of different things. And those again can be upgraded as well. So that adds another layer of depth to the game. Considering Magicka's success and how rough of a launch that game had, and I think the main reason it was so successful is just because it was fun to play and it focused on multiplayer. I have a, a really strong feeling that this game is going to be incredibly successful and popular as well. Okay, we're ready to get this going now. Basically, I feel very confident that my bottom defenses are strong enough to hold off the enemy waves. And I'm only going to be worried about the two stronger enemies that are going to be spawning here close to the crystal. So that's why I got these blockades in place to hold them off long enough while I can beat them down. And this will act as a secondary line of defense if something down there does manage to get through. <clears throat> so let's get this started. So new enemy type here. These are the strongest ones yet. They have a lot of life. They're kind of like tanks. Melee focus. They can't hit you if you stay away from them. Here's our other one. See now, my towers are going to hold him off. He's not going to get a hit on that crystal. Alright, down you go. Let's see what's going on down here. <laughs> Looks like the towers took care of most of the business. These archers can be a bit of a problem. They'll stay out of the range of your towers. Final wave. And level up. Let's get a little bit of hero speed. Some area. There we go. This thing here is about to Let's show you repair real quick. Good as new. So I find the user interface pretty innovative. It works really well for this game. You can use hotkeys if you choose to. As you see over there in the heads up display, one through zero is all hotkeyed, so you can use those if you'd like. And I've been picking up all those items and sending them to the item box. Let me show you that real quick. Probably have some stuff in here I can use. It gives you a nice little thumbs up if it's better than what you're wearing, thumbs down if it's worse, and thumbs to the side if it's about the same. So that's a good quick reference. So I know this weapon is definitely better than what I have right now. So we'll go ahead and give it to my hero. Looks like lots of armor here and gloves. Lucky, lucky, lucky. We'll go with that for now. Some chest armor, some gloves, some boots. And now what you can do, here's a really neat feature as well. If you pick up an item and you know you're going to save it for later, you can click on it and say lock it and it protects it so that you can accidentally not sell it. And also so you can use this sell all feature. And it's gonna sell every single item that I don't have locked. 
and now you can see in the bank I have this much money and I can use that later on to purchase stuff. Get some more towers up here. And what's coming up this wave? Two ogres on each side. Yeah, I think we've got enough to take care of that. I'm not worried about down here at all. I've got double barricades and five towers. Blocking the only two paths up. So I'm really only worried about the ogres at the top. Looks like I've not got enough space in there. I can always put it behind. Almost done, guys. Last wave here, and then we're going to conclude this intro gameplay video. There's a lot more to the game than what I showed you here. There's the crafting system, where you can actually have your name permanently labeled on an item. So if you trade that item out to someone else later in, the, in life, you can actually... They'll see that this item was forged by, or raised by, or whatever. A lot of cool things like that. I think the online system is going to be really great for this game. All right, final wave, here we go. I'm gonna do what I did last time, just stay to the top, focus on killing these stronger enemies that spawn right up here close to the crystal. Looks like one of them has lightning element. So you have to be careful once one has element, the other guy's poison element. That generally makes them stronger, and then if you have towers that are based on one element, like I think my towers right now are based on lightning, they wouldn't hurt this guy very much, so. See what's on the other side. With two coming from each side, I'll kill one, and then uh, let my towers kill the other one. Still, that my killing both on one side, then forcing my towers to fight the other two. Okay, and let's go hop down here and help out. That's it. When you complete it, it's usually going to be all the best loot for that stage. You're going to have all the money left over that you can put into your bank. And, I, and you usually get a nice big experience bonus as well, giving you a level up. There we go. Pick up this loot. think we got it all all right guys so that was it i wanted to show you the game i really do enjoy it so far i'm going to keep playing i'm going to try to bring you some more videos when i think of some other content to show you tell me what you think about the game in the con uh the comments of the video always remember to rate and subscribe if you like what you see and i'll have more stuff for you in the future